this is Madden 19. I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. We are just moments away from kickoff, and we've got a good one on tap between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Indianapolis Colts. Kickoff is moments away, so let's get you out to our commentators. And standing by for the call are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach from the heartland of America, EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to Lucas Oil Stadium here in Indianapolis. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Andy Dalton coming out onto the field with the rest of the offense. Not quite the reception right now that he received this past preseason game in Buffalo. Of course, the Andy and Jordan Dalton Foundation was a recipient of all the fans last year. I'll let you tell the story and what all took place. Yeah, go back to the last game of the regular season. Buffalo needed Baltimore to get beat to get into the playoffs and Cincinnati was playing Baltimore and late in the game Andy Dalton connects with Tyler Boyd for a touchdown you might remember the video of the celebration in the Bills locker room that that went you know everywhere of course but since that time the Buffalo Bills fans so overwhelmed to be back in the playoffs for the first time in 17 years contributed over $450,000 to that foundation he rifles one that's intercepted He's picked off at his own 46. Then they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. And the Colts coming out now. the interception it's locked got his man complete over the middle it's Doyle and he gets this inside the 35 yard line a 14 yard gain for Indianapolis and also moved the sticks I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle and if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Luck on first down. Throw left side complete. That's Doyle. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. I know when you get got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right, that run after catch. They only got a yard out of that last completion. And that makes this second and nine. To throw on second down is locked. The completion good. This is Eric Ebron. An agile move and a nice game, then dropped at the 25-yard line. The reception good for seven. 
It's third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Bluff looks to throw on third and long. And he's got Rodgers. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, He's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script. However, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. The Colts with a first red zone opportunity of the ball game. First and 10 right at the 20. On first and 10, Locke brought in over the middle by Grant. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Again, Luck. Escaping the... And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Carlos Dunlap in there to sack him for a loss of six. Enough takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Luck and the Colts looking for something big here after the sack. This is third and long. Out of the gun. Luck going for it all. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Well, that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, Took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. So with fourth down coming up, here's Adam Vinatieri now for the Colts field goal. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3-0. So an opening drive field goal maybe doesn't whip this crowd into a frenzy, but I think that they will take the early lead. There's no doubt about it. They will always take the early lead, and maybe that celebration comes later if they play well and they can break things open. But right now, this is all about letting the offense just get settled in. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. On the return, it's Alex Erickson. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Getting set to go again, Andy Dalton marches back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. So here's Dalton and the Bengals now, first and 10 at their own 23. The former second-round pick, this is Joe Mixon, takes this to the 27, given four yards. Here now the offense for the Bengals. 
about why they have A.J. Green who can run every route you want on the route tree and take the top of a defense with his speed and has the length to go over the top of people to catch the ball. But maybe the most impressive thing about him, the only wide receiver ever to be a pro bowler in his first seven years in the NFL. Once again, they run with Mixon, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL, and a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses, and now we're seeing it in the NFL, those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. And for the moment, this will be a first down. But we have a marker on the field. Let's see if this stands. Holding offense. So a decent game. Still oh, third down. On the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. A hundred people celebrating. The guys who just gave up that play. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. Dalton here from the gun. And he can't quite intercept it. Zone coverage, free safety was there. Couldn't come up with it, and now it's fourth down. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. the spin and once more it's a 49 yard punt but subtract nine there for the return and the Colts will go on offense here first and ten here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over and they split the uprights last time for three they've got the lead they're not going to play this conservative they're, they're not hoping for another field goal they're hoping for a touchdown I'm with you on that one I like where your head is I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right trying to sit on a lead and play that way that doesn't work too well for most teams run your offense yeah, run what you do best exactly put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way and the best way to do it touchdowns they go play action here on first down Ebron caught left side the completion good for three and it's second down got to give credit where it's due really nice defense on that play the pitch and catch was successful but not any run after it down completion only netted him three second and seven I got 11. I got 11. One, <laughs> on second down here's Locke wide open receiver complete and he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down good yardage there for the Colts 18 and a first down
They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Here's Mack, and he'll be brought down at about the 42. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts, being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. So third and two, this quite possibly four-down territory, though, if they're stopped. They'll run it now out of the gun. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. I wonder if they just kind of outguessed themselves a little bit trying to run it on third down. Probably should have gone to the air to try and pick it up. Instead, the punting unit will have to run on the field. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. Alex Erickson deep for Cincinnati. Bengals offense, they trot back onto the field. Let's talk about the wide receivers. Everybody in Cincinnati, they know what they're getting out of A.J. Green. He's over 550 career catches. He seems to do it every season. But what about John Ross? Because he was a top 10 pick. What, no catches last year? Zero catches, number nine pick in the draft. The speed overwhelming. 4-2-2, 40-yard dash at the combine, which set a new record. For them to get no production from him, well, that's got to change. And already in this preseason, in their game against Buffalo, first play of offense for Cincinnati, they throw the deep ball to John Ross. He makes about 15 moves, beats two guys to the end zone, and got a few other plays from him as well throughout that game. Expect to see him touch the ball off, and whether he's catching it or maybe even a few jet sweeps. 18 yards on that one, and the Bengals are moving. First down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Mixon with a first down carry. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Someone's looking fresh, and his own line is definitely looking their chops. Everyone likes to run block. If you're an offensive lineman, nice early burst, nice gain, too. trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Off the play fake to Mixon. This is Dalton. And the catch made. It's Tyler Boyd. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside to break it inside. Really well run route. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. A 
first down throw coming for Dalton. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. A lot of times people want to recreate the past, especially when the pass has been successful. When the Colts were good, they flew on defense. And Kamoko Ture, out of Rutgers, he can do exactly that when he rushes the passer. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. It's second down, Dalton Walker. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. So we have now seen connection number one between Dalton and Adriel Jeremiah, A.J. Green. Say that again. Adriel Jeremiah. Look at you. You are full of knowledge <laughs> and information. And you know something? I'll bet Andy Dalton learned his full name as well because he figured out quickly. This is going to be my number one target. I got to know this guy in a big way. Dalton with a give here to Mixon. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Danico Autry is in on the stop. There's the Colts' defense, and we've talked so much this preseason about the offense and Andrew Luck, but we focus here defensively. How about Hassan Ridgeway? Already has four sacks so far in the preseason. So we're thinking about how does that translate into the regular season, but we'll find out. But for any player seeking to distinguish himself, if you have a big preseason, your confidence level goes so high you think that you'll just go ahead and be that same player in the regular season? And oftentimes, it happens. They'll stay on the ground, mix him again. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Can we just take that run and turn it into a kind of a clip and save? Because that tells you everything you need to know about this drive. They've been moving the ball awfully well. And before they can get settled in here, time expires on the first quarter of action. 3 nothing is our score. We'll come back to Indianapolis after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, and it's the Bengals with a football to begin quarter number two. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. to the right side it's Eifert and he'll be brought down at the 21 just shy of the 20 in the red zone the completion good for only six and that'll bring up fourth well it wasn't a big strike but that completion put them in really great range what do we have now fourth and inches yeah it's not more than a half a foot you know what I would do here you would always go for it <laughs> I'm one of those guys And Bullock will put this one through, and that will tie us at 3-3. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, you're in the wrong lot of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And 
the Colts getting ready to go. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at about the 32. On first down, it's Luck. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Second and five after the five yard completion on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the 46 yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. But that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. And that'll make it second and 12. Man, wasn't that long ago that the guy playing that spot was an outside linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? across the 45 up to about the 46 yard line Geno Atkins the pro bowler in there on the stop the Colts on third down just one for three thus far this is third and nine from the gun here's one Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the second time. This one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired, and if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting up field and giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And a short pick up here as he'll get up to about the 22-yard line. And that time, the tackle by Malik Hooker. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Again, it's Mixon. And some room to roll now. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. 
whether it's what we call an even front or an odd front. And an odd front's real easy to figure out. If that guy is lined up over the nose of the center, typically that's an odd front defense. Odd number of people, meaning 3-4 versus the 4-3, which is an even front. You've got to control those guys in the middle. Whether it's the nose or the two defensive tackles in a four-man front, if those guys can't get moved, you cannot run the ball in the middle of the field. And in that play, they were able to actually take care of business. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Again, here's Bernard. And he'll get this up to about the 40. There to stop him was Darius Leonard. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. It's really come into vogue to talk about the different gaps that the defense tries to attack in an offensive line. And most of the time, we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A-gap blitz? But where is the A-gap? It's the space between the center and the guards, either side. So when you're having a double A-gap blitz, that's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation, though, that A-gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it, protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. But one thing's for sure, when you've got a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Second down, here's Mixon. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, that play was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Alex Erickson, 45 yards. And the Bengals are in for six. The fly route works for the TD ground. And you know what the receivers love to say? If we get even with the defender, we're leaving. And that's exactly what he did all the way into the end zone. And then he was on the business end catching it once he got over the stripe. On for the point after is Randy Bullock. 
Bullock good on the extra point. And the lead is now 10 to 3. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. Bullock out now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that... You start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll fake it. Now Luck. A dump down to Turbo. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that'll make it a second down. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he powers his way up past the 30. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Yeah, baby. The Colts on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and four. A shotgun snap for Love. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Mack. Give him seven yards on the play, and they do pick up the conversion on third down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Now a first down throw, lock. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now Mack. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on the gain of 10. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let it pick up the first down, keep the sticks moving. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Luck on first down. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. And that's a loss of seven on the first down play.
So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. They'll run. This is Robert Turbin. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coach's two-minute drill. And now they're looking for 19 yards here on third down following two negative plays. They'll run with Mack. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. Getting ready to go again. Here's Andy Dalton marching back onto the field. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while well, your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, that'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, I can see he's looked pretty good to this point. First and ten. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Another look for Dalton on second and ten. Flushed out right. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time it's third and three. Out of the gun. It's Dalton. He's got his man. Boy. And he's going to get to the 31. Enough for the first down. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So how would you describe that one, partner? Workmanlike right there, getting that first down, blue-collar type football? Yeah, only needed three, got four, just enough. I like workmanlike. I think it's pretty cool myself. Everything doesn't have to be high glamour in this game. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action.
first and ten for Dalton. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. 12 yards that time, and a Cincinnati first down. I know they don't like to hear it when they get to a certain age, but then you have to start to use your, your skills, your wiles, right, your mind to beat guys to the football, and getting your toes tapped in bounds definitely qualifies as that, doesn't and it? The veteran showing he still has the agility. Play fake here on first down. Now he's going to go up top over the... And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Give him 30 yards there. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. And Bullock will put this one through, and they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you gotta expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. 
Guts fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. On first down, Rob. Over the middle here, it's Hilton. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Play action. It's locked. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you <laughs> move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Lock on third down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Doyle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because there should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Luck now, pretty amazing. 14 of 16 throwing the ball. It's first and 10. Now a carry for Mack. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. No, that wasn't an explosive run. That wasn't one that took it all the way to the house. But, boy, for a team that's had trouble running it the entire game, that's the kind of run they need, hopefully, to get themselves kick-started. They'll fake the handoff. Now run. Under pressure and down he goes. Luck is sacked. Carlos Dunlap. In there to sack him for a loss of six. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Luck and the Colts looking for something big here after the sack. This is third and long. Out of the gun, Luck. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, they'll, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, 
Let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense. Yeah. We got the de we got the we got the lead. Defense. Don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. 12 yards that time, and it's Cincinnati first down. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. Here's a give to Mixon. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. Throwing on second down. He completes it to Boyd. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 68 yards receiving now for him in the game. Had a first down on that last catch as well. to 15 through the air. Here's first and 10. A handoff to Mixon. And he's going to take this one down inside the 45. So just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. Off the play fake to Mixon. This is Dalton. Going deep depth. And this is caught. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. A big play there. 44 yards. And the Bengals add on to their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, you know, the second half, no matter what, whether it's first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. Here's Bullock now for the extra point. Extra point up and good by Bullock. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And it ends with a Bengals score. Bullock out now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. 
And now Indianapolis set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. On first and 10, Luck. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. This has been a really nice day for the defense. They've made it so difficult to find open receivers because they're able to squeeze the passing lanes down. A lot of what they're doing is communicating. Receivers in one area, receivers in another area. They're almost what they call passing them off from one defender to the next, even in zone defenses, and making it very hard to find an open spot for the quarterback to deliver the ball. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defensive coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things. They've not let them run the ball very well at all. They gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. Throwing on third down, Luck. And this is going to be incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on for the fifth time here today. Deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fielded at the 20. It's a 47-yard punt, return of six. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Getting set to go again, Andy Dalton marches back onto the field. He has been consistent, hasn't he? He played well in the first quarter, good second quarter, and now continuing that here in the third. And that's the word that they're always seeking from the guy taking the snaps, is consistency taking care of the ball, making sure it gets to the right people, no errors, right, not turning it over, and just doing all the right things. That's leadership, and it inspires confidence in the team. Yeah, been a good leadership and a good distributor. Hey, Lee, Lee. <laughs> they go play action here on first down. Boyd's the target, and he has it over the middle. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. Andy Dalton now, 13 out of 17 throwing the ball. He's got a first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. They'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. The Bengals on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Dalton here from the gun. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. John Simon with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. 
It's a team game, but sometimes individuals do stand out, don't they? How about that for a twofer? Tackle for a loss on the running play on the previous down, and then comes right back and gets a sack. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Oh on first down, it's long. On the right side, it's Hilton with a catch. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. to mark him down at the 39. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Luck now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 47. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. He'll get about four here down to the 43-yard line. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. second down and he'll take this one down to about the 40. Big Geno Atkins here to bring him down. The Colts on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. Here it's third and two. It's Robert Turbin. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. <laughs> 
Cincinnati now ready to take the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? The drive starts with a handoff to Bernard. And he'll be taken down at the 18. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. predictable and you know me pretty well on second down and short what I like to say play action yeah without a doubt I thought that was a great spot to call it instead didn't go their way did it now defense sold out for the run worked out well now the Bengals on third down they've hit it 50 percent three of six to this point here it's third and three they come to the line they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter we'll return with more after this you're watching the nfl on ea sports back now here on ea sports it's the Bengals in possession of the football and in possession of the lead as well as we start the fourth just shy of the 20. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. Mixon. He gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. And the Bengals on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and five. the gun. Dalton. And Eifert has it. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Dalton to his big target, Eifert, for the Cincinnati first. 
He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. Andy Dalton now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. Mixon. He's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself. And that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. They got two of the three they needed there. Leaves him with third and just a yard. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at the 20. Now Luck. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Oh, 
Now it's locked. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. To throw on second down is long. Over the middle complete. That's Rodgers. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Eight yards and the completion, but now they face third down. The Colts on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This will be third and five. A shotgun snap for Luck. Caught left side by Hilton. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down. But the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. They'll run for it with Turbin. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. I tell you, on that first glance, I thought he got it easily. But the mark was not a real favorable one. As it turns out, they do give him the first down, but that was very close to going the other way. down throw lock Ebron with it over the middle and he'll get it out to midfield let's see yeah they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50 five yards on the catch there brings up second down they gave up the completion there but this is what zone defenses count on catching the ball and not much run after the catch second and five after the five yard completion on first down the 50 it's long Ebron's got it and he'll get it down here to the 43 good for a Colt first down the former Lion Ebron there bringing it in from Andrew Luck well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago and I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense and guys want to be involved they can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you've got a heck of a tight end candidate. Luck going to bring him up first and 10. And he's hit on all six of his throws on this drive. Luck on first down. His throw incomplete. Darquez Denard there defensively. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. They have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. False start. Offense. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd Still is supposed to down. help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Luck throwing again. 
Now a hit and Locke lost the football. It's out. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but if the other team doesn't get it, that's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. The Colts on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This will be third and forever. Luck now to throw. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that's going to make it fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. False start. Offense. Now they nab the rookie there for the five-yard penalty. So much going through his head. You know it just has to be, right? It's still his assignment and realizing every game he plays, one of the better players in the league will be opposite him. Now the offense not going anywhere. They're staying out there. They've converted once already on this drive. Here they go again on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is incomplete. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. A gutsy decision there at this stage of the second half in their own territory and a decision that they might regret. Can't wait for the postmortem. You know, this postgame press conference, because the questions are going to come fast and furious about this decision, no matter how the, how the game turns out, right? What were you thinking there? Why? Did you have a certain play call? Did, were you confident in your defense? Oh, yeah. Why? <laughs> it's yeah. going to keep coming up. Yeah, no matter the scoreboard, just tough to justify. This is Mixon. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time. And that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Back to Nixon on first down. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. They'll run here with Mixon. And he stopped immediately there. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Four down, four down. Hey, uh -huh. 
They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation. And I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed. But the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. And Bullock will put this one through. And that will extend their lead even further. So he remains perfect three for three in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now... You know what his range is, and as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. After the field goal, now it's Bullock to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. And in the early going, the running game, as we see the numbers, it just wasn't on point. Well, now it's gotten more true to form. And sometimes it takes a little while for an offensive line to get in sync. Because early in the game, defenses throw different patterns at you, different formations, different sets. And you might not block them quite the way you want to. But as you start to get into a groove and you figure out what they're doing, now it all comes together. And that's what we're seeing right now. First down, Love, and it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. to the air. Lock on second down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Rodgers. And now prior to this third and one, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. So the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. Luck looks to throw on third and one. Over the middle complete. That's Doyle. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Eight yards on the pickup there, and it moves the sticks. Now a play fake here on first down toward the sideline. And look at that catch, dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Again, Lock. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he gets it down to the 32. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll bring up second down. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. To the air again, Lock. And down he goes. 
They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Luck and the Colts looking for something big here after the sack. This is third and long. They'll fake the handoff. Now Luck got his man complete over the middle. It's Doyle. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with 13 seconds left to play. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. Luck going to bring him up first and 10. And he's 5 for 6 now throwing the ball on this drive. Out of the gun. Luck. Complete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. Sean Williams there defensively to break that one up. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Second and ten, Luck. And that one got tipped. Kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're taking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. <laughs> Throwing again is Lock. He's going to let it fly. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates. And he'll be stopped shy of the 15 at the 14-yard line on the return. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it, and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long, everybody.